This is a Squiz Kids podcast. Your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. Each week we give the world globe a spin and see where we land. Then we take the kids of Australia on an audio excursion to visit that country and its people. I'm Amanda Bauer and today on Squiz the World we're visiting Morocco. A country in northwest Africa that has beautiful beaches on the Mediterranean Sea, the rugged Rif and Atlas mountain ranges in the interior, and the sand dunes of the Sahara to the south. Let me tell you, there is nothing quite like riding on a camel at sunset in the Sahara. So strap yourselves into the Squiz Kids super fast supersonic jetliner as we take off and take a squiz at Morocco. Just the fact. People have been living in Morocco for hundreds of thousands of years. In the early 8th century, Morocco was conquered by Muslims, and now more than 95% of the population are Muslim. So no matter where you go in Morocco, you're going to hear the evening call to prayer from the mosques. 36 million people live in Morocco, and the biggest city is Marrakesh. In fact, the name Morocco comes from Marrakesh, which was the capital hundreds of years ago. Nowadays, the capital is Rabat, which is where you'll find the elected members of government as well as the king. In Australia, our king, remember, we have one now after the death of Queen Elizabeth II, doesn't have much to do with everyday politics and doesn't hold much real power. It is very different in Morocco. The king holds enormous power, especially over the military, religious affairs and Morocco's relationships with other countries. He can issue decrees, which means orders, that have the same power as laws made by parliament. In fact, you can go to prison in Morocco if you criticise the king or the government. You'll also face up to 15 years in the slammer if you try to convert anyone to a religion other than Islam. For these reasons and more, Morocco is said to have a poor record on human rights, which basically means the freedom to be yourself and express your opinions. OK, enough politics. Whenever you travel, it's important to learn a few words in that country's language. It is a great way to show respect. So let's... Learn the lingo. There are two official languages in Morocco. Arabic and Amazir, which is spoken by the Berber people, who were in Morocco long before the Arabic Muslims arrived. The Amazir alphabet is called Tamazit, and it has 38 consonants and just three vowels. I put a link in your episode notes to Tamazit. Have a go writing your name. Now, when I visited Morocco, I made a lovely friend named Mustafa, and I am so excited to introduce you to his niece, Hajar, who is going to teach us some Amazir. My name is Hajar, and I am 10 years old. I live in Marrakesh, in Morocco. Here is how you say hello, how are you in Amazir. Azul, Here is how you say thank you in Amazir. Tanmirtnun. Here is how you say goodbye in Amazir. Tanmat Hajar, your English is incredible. Now that we can communicate a little bit, it's time for school. The Moroccan government has been putting a lot of effort into improving its education system. 20 years ago, about half of all Moroccans could not read or write. Since then, the government has built a lot of schools, trained a lot of teachers and provided poor families with extra food and help with housing to encourage them to send their kids to school. The World Bank says that now, 20 years later, 95% of young people are able to read and write effectively. But there are still some problems. A survey this year found that only 27% of teachers reported having a proper library and about 30% said they had access to a printer, which makes teaching hard. Then only about a third of people can get their kids to preschool and there's the issue of uniforms. Girls in Morocco are expected to wear a long white lab coat to school, kind of like the ones that doctors wear in a hospital. And they can be sent home if their skirts or dresses are considered too short. Boys can wear anything they like. And when the school year started in September, girls took to social media to express their frustration at being treated differently. Watch this space to see if that policy changes. 
Now, how kids get to school in Morocco all depends on where they live. In the ancient city of Fez, if you live inside the walls of the Medina, you can forget about getting a lift. There are no cars. Going to Fez is like going back in time. Let's go and check it out. Time travel. Let's go back, way back, to the 9th century when Fez was founded. That makes it the world's biggest medieval city still active today. And when you step inside one of the enormous gates that take you through the ancient walls of Fez, you'd be forgiven for thinking that the time machine had failed to bring you back to the 21st century. You'll see donkeys walking through the narrow cobbled streets carrying heavy loads. There are women carrying loaves of unbaked bread from their homes to the wood-fired community ovens. You'll pass men banging pieces of copper into cooking pots. You can peek inside Islamic schools called madrasas from the 1300s. They're still teaching today. And because most buildings in Fez were constructed before there was indoor plumbing, you'll see fountains everywhere, as well as hammams or bathhouses where people go to wash. I didn't see a single supermarket inside the walls of Fez. Instead, there are sprawling souks or markets that are like labyrinths. It's really easy to get lost in Fez, and especially in a souk. And then there's the city's infamous tannery, where animal skins are turned into leather. The process followed by the men who work there hasn't changed in 1,000 years. And when you first arrive, you're given a big bunch of fresh mint. As soon as you get close to the tannery, you'll know why. There are men standing and working at vile-smelling pits of liquid. And if you want to watch them for more than a few seconds, you'll need to stuff that mint right up next to your nose. First, the animal skins go into a mixture of water, limestone and, wait for it, uh, pigeon poo. They stay there for three days. The limestone removes the hair from the skin and the pigeon poo makes it soft. Then the skins are washed and dyed with natural colours. Red comes from poppies, yellow from saffron, orange from henna. Then the skins are laid out on the surrounding building's flat roofs to dry before being cut and turned into bags, shoes and other leather goods. I'll put a link to a video in your episode notes. Be grateful that it doesn't come with smells. OK, give me a minute to get my appetite back after reliving that, because I think it is... Dinner time. Have you ever eaten couscous? If you have, I'm going to bet that it came out of a packet, was put into some boiling water, and a few minutes later, it was ready to go. Well, couscous is Morocco's national dish, but the traditional way of making it is way harder. Groups of people come together over several days to make big batches of couscous out of semolina, which is the hardest part of the hardest kind of wheat, durum wheat. The semolina is sprinkled with water, hand rolled to form small pellets, and then those pellets are sprinkled with dry flour to keep them separated. The pellets are dried in the sun and can then keep for several months. Once you're ready to cook it, you put the couscous in a special steamer called a couscousière over the top of a pot of stew so that the couscous becomes light and fluffy and flavoured by the steam from the stew. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Of course, your family may not have days spare to make couscous by hand. So grab a box from the supermarket and make a Moroccan beef stew called a tagine to go with it. Beef is the most popular meat to eat in Morocco and a tagine pairs meat with fruit, nuts and spices. It is yum. Time for the quiz. This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. What stinky ingredient is used to soften animal skins at the Fez tannery? That's right, it is pigeon poo. Question number two. Name one of the two official languages of Morocco. And of course, you'll get an extra point if you can name both of them. The languages are Arabic and Amazir. Question number three. What are girls in Morocco required to wear to school? 
You got it, a long white lab coat. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for staying curious about the world and joining me on this incredible trip to Morocco. Now get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out. These episodes are edited and engineered by Carter Quinn. If you enjoyed that little trip, don't forget that every Wednesday all through the Christmas holidays, the Squiz Kids Superfast Supersonic Jetliner will take off weekly to explore a new country. We've got Latvia, Cuba, Ireland and more on our itinerary. And on Saturdays, Bryce will be challenging you and your grown-ups to a kids versus adults quiz on a different topic each week. And on Mondays, we'll be releasing a Squiz Kids shortcut where we'll dive into the who, what, where, when, why and how of big topics like sharks, YouTube, fireworks and more. All of this amazing content is absolutely free. Consider it Bryce's and my gift to you this festive season. And if you just can't get enough, don't forget about Newshounds, our brand new media literacy program for primary school kids. Your chance to join Squizzy the Newshound as he sniffs out the truth on the internet. If you're keen to know more, head to www.squizkids.com.au. And of course, if this is the first time you've come across us, Squiz Kids Today is a free daily news podcast during the school term, a kid-friendly take on the big news headlines, and we're available wherever you get your podcasts or on our website, squizkids.com.au.